Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. All right, just listen up. The Guinness World Records Award for the deepest human invasion into the Earth's crust goes to the Kola Superdeep Borehole. Ooh. Its depth is 7.4 miles. You can find it in the icy part of Russia, where the winter temperature of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a common thing. Well, that's chilling. Local scientists started to dig it in the 1970s. The grand plan was to reach a depth of 9.3 miles. It was a purely scientific project to study the Earth's crust and maybe get to the hot mantle. Well, when it's so cold outside, it kind of makes sense. Up to the depth of 4.3 miles, the drill easily coped with granite rock. Then, denser layers came and broke the drill. The scientists had to change the drilling pattern. In the end, it resembled a tree with many branches. The deeper it went, the hotter it became. The temperature went up to 350 degrees. The equipment was constantly out of order and work was stopped completely in 1992. If you see this legendary place with your own eyes, you'd hardly realize there's an abyss right beneath your feet. The borehole looks like a rather small and unambitious hole in the ground. The place is now abandoned, overgrown with moss and rust. It has its fair share of myths surrounding it, too. One of them says people hear strange sounds like moans and screams from the depths. In reality, of course, none of this is true. At the time, many countries were engaged in the study of the Earth's crust. For example, Germany. They duly noted the experience of the Kola borehole and made a super-tech drill that could withstand extreme temperatures. A location was chosen in Bavaria at the junction of two tectonic plates. In the past, they were the shores of an ancient ocean. In the early 90s, a group of researchers began drilling a well there. But already at a depth of 4 miles, the Earth fought back. It deflected the drill from the vertical, and then the temperature made a surprise spike to 520 degrees. All these problems forced scientists to stop at a depth of 5.6 miles. In 1977, a company in Austria started drilling a well at a site with plentiful resources, or so they thought. They did find large gas reserves, but there was an unexpected problem. As the drill entered the chamber, the well collapsed. They tried again and made a new, even bigger borehole that went as deep as 5.3 miles. But ironically, they weren't able to drill into the gas chamber again. In Sweden, expectations from drilling weren't met either. At the site of a huge crater, 30 miles in diameter, they started the search for gas and oil. It's the largest crater in Europe, which must have appeared because of a meteorite. The well went deep, but unfortunately, nothing of interest was found. At 4 miles down, the drilling stopped. One of the deepest oil wells in the world is Bertha Rogers in Oklahoma. Its depth is almost 6 miles. In 1974, the Lone Star Company achieved such a stunning result in just over 500 days. For five years, it was the deepest borehole in the world, until the Kola Superdeep was drilled. Bertha Rogers could probably have gone even deeper, but the drill suddenly struck a molten sulfur deposit. It grew solid around the drill string, breaking the rig. If you can't get to the Earth's mantle from the ground, do it from the water. Project Moho was just about that. It got its name from Moho, the threshold between crust and mantle, and, well, a hole. You know, Moho. Well, anyway, the project was launched in the 1960s and was overseen by the U.S. National Science Foundation. The crust on the ocean floor is thinner than on land, and the mantle is closer. Scientists had hoped that a three-mile-deep underwater borehole would bring them there. They chose a location in the Pacific Ocean, where the bottom was at a depth of about 2 miles. There were two phases planned for the project, and the first was a success. A total of five wells were drilled, each not exceeding 600 feet in depth. Unfortunately, the second phase never happened. Too many problems were involved. So, apparently, there ain't no moho, um, holes. Today, underwater wells are commonplace. Their main purpose is extraction of oil and gas. The EVA 4000 American drilling platform is located in the Gulf of Mexico. This huge structure rises above the water at a height of a 20-story building. 
The platform moves around looking for oil at depths of over 6,000 feet. And when it finds a good spot, it's capable of drilling up to 6 miles into the seabed. Now, let's move to Africa. Here at the very south of the continent, there's a huge quarry, the Kimberley Diamond Mine. Now, it's easy to drill through the ground when you have the best equipment. But this hole was literally dug by hand. About 50,000 workers dug it tirelessly in the late 19 and early 20th centuries using ordinary shovels. And no, they hardly wanted to get to the opposite side of the earth. They were attracted by the enchanting brilliance of diamonds. One of the most famous precious stones, Tiffany, weighing 128.5 carats, was found in the Kimberley mine. The depth of the hole reached 790 feet. Just imagine how difficult it was to return from work. It was like climbing 66 floors on foot. When the work stopped, the bottom of the pit was partially filled with soil, and then water flooded the place. Today, it's a popular site among tourists. And surely, each of them secretly hopes to find a diamond there. With the industrial boom, oil became even more popular than diamonds. And the oil wells around the world are getting deeper. For example, in 2008, Qatar drilled the longest oil well at that time, El Shaheed. It was 7.6 miles long, and it only took them a little over a month. The vertical part of the shaft reaches 6.7 miles. Stretched up instead of down, the shaft would reach the height of commercial airplane flights. The record was broken in 2012 by the Z44 Shavo oil well. When they measured its length, the new hole beat the one in Qatar by about 300 feet. Just for a clearer picture, either of these two oil wells would fit almost 15 Burj Khalifas, or 40 Eiffel Towers. Moving on to Canada and high up into the sky to look at it from space. See those two huge holes? If you don't know, those are diamond mining sites. You might think that an alien invasion happened while you slept right through. This enormous place is on the island of Lac de Gras, not far from the Arctic Circle. This is a whole city with industrial and administrative buildings, a boiler house, living quarters for workers, and even an airstrip. In 2018, the largest diamond in North America was found here. It weighed 552 carats. Apart from diamonds and oil, the bowels of the earth have a lot of other useful stuff. One example is copper. Let's go to Utah and see the giant Bingham Canyon mine. Copper has been mined here for over a century. The width of this quarry reaches 2.5 miles, and it goes half a mile down. Just imagine how breathtaking a paragliding flight would be over this powerful structure. But the greatest treasure of the planet is, of course, fresh water. And to get to it, people would dig as deep as they have to. The deepest water well in the world is found in Great Britain. It was dug by hand in the 19th century. People just had to keep on digging because they couldn't get to water. And as a result, they reached almost 1,300 feet. When the water finally gushed from under the ground, the workers barely managed to escape from the well. Many of us spend a huge part of our life under the ground. Yeah, I mean the subway. The deepest underground station in the world is in Kyiv, Ukraine. It takes over 5 minutes for the escalator to lower you to the platform. After all, you're traveling nearly 350 feet down. Sometimes nature decides to dig something deep on its own. Most likely, the Mariana Trench is the deepest point in the ocean. Its bottom, called the Challenger Deep, is 6.8 miles below sea level. Sunlight never gets there. The pressure down below is more than a thousand times higher than on the surface. If you decide to dive to the bottom, you'll spend four hours of your time and a whole lot of money on the necessary equipment. Scientists have even found mountains there. By the way, if Everest was moved to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, we wouldn't be able to see its top on the surface. A little riddle. Can you dig water? The answer is yes, if it's in the form of ice. The Uran Observatory in Antarctica made it by digging boreholes up to 1.5 miles deep using hot water. Optical detector filaments pass through them. They capture elementary particles, neurons. In fact, this is a telescope that's directed not upwards, but downwards into the ice. But that's a completely different story.